sometimes if you were lucky you could get a screwdriver in and pop them apart like that and then you can repair it This is a tape splicer and this is very old. This goes back to the 1960s. Used to use this for splicing open reel tapes. So it's set up for quarter inch. But of course I could make it work for a cassette tape as well. No problem. Uh, it's gonna be the wrong width but at least it will hold the tape in place. I'm gonna splice it on the back side of the tape. So I'm just gonna drop the leader in and close down the little clip. The same goes for the other side of the tape. We're going to drop the tape in place and drop down the little clip. It holds it in place. And we're going to try to line them up some, somewhat here. Somewhat hold the tapes in place so that I can cut it and put some splicing tape over it. So we line the tape up, close that down, that's got the tape held in place. We've got this set in the cut mode, uh, cut is this way. So we push this down and this will cut, if it still works, it will cut the bad piece of tape and leave me with the tape to be spliced. Now I can take a piece of splicing tape and it will hold these pieces together. At least that's the idea. And just put a piece of splicing tape. When you're dealing with a quarter inch tape it's a little bit easier. But we just take a piece of tape and we just put it over top of this and that will stick the tape together and then we can... This one has a trim feature to trim out um, for um, quarter inch tape obviously it's not going to work on eighth inch tape but it's got us in the ballpark so I can now trim it with a pair of scissors or a razor blade or whatever. As you can see the tape the uh, ends are lined up pretty pretty close and then I can just trim the excess. I'm going to just trim into it just the slightest little bit on each side just to make sure that we're not going to have any exposed adhesive that could jam up and stick to something inside the machine. So now there's no exposed adhesive. I can wind the tape back onto the spool and then reassemble the cassette. I'm going to wind the tape back onto the shell, onto the take out the supply side and uh, thread the tape and then I got to glue the cassette back together because this was one that was glued together at the factory so I'll make sure that the tape goes over the proper guides around the rollers and over to the take up hub Put the slip sheet over top. 
that will kind of hold the reels in place while I reassemble the cassette. And now I just need to apply a little bit of glue to hold the sides back together and this tape should be repaired. I'm going to use some crazy glue and just glue the cassette back together. Put a little bit of glue along each of the edges here. And that should, once this sets up, which will set up fairly quickly, that should uh, fix this cassette. I have one more that I need to work on. I have another old cassette that has a different problem. This On this one here, the little pressure pad is missing. I'm sure I've got lots of old tapes around that are garbage that I can steal a pressure pad off and we'll fix this one while we're at it. So this cassette, I've got another pressure pad here with a complete with a spring. This one here being a little bit easier to work on because this one's held together with screws. It's just a simple matter of unscrewing the screws, lifting the top off it, changing out the pressure pad, and reassembling this pre-recorded cassette. And of course these tapes both came in a tape deck that I was working on. And I've decided to put the videos of repairing the cassettes up separately from the deck itself. So stay tuned because the deck will be coming up next, but I did the, I did the uh, tapes first. So we just remove the top lid, leave that little shield in place, pop out the broken pressure pad, put the new one in. Now the tape I took this out of was a damaged tape. It was, a, it was an old cassette that a friend gave me a box of tapes that were his dad's tapes and he transferred all the material over to um, digital and I was um, selling off the, the actual cassettes himself um, the good quality ones I'm selling off the I've got like dozens of them well I've got some left I've sold off a bunch of them but uh, most of them were on high bias tapes so uh, the ones that were on regular cheap like Radio Shack garbage tapes uh, nobody's gonna want them I don't think so I'm not too concerned about sacrificing one of those garbage tapes to resurrect somebody else's pre-recorded tape and the screws go back in and that is as simple as that couldn't be easier to fix one of these cassettes not like old 8-track tapes where you spend half the day untangling them and and retensioning them and all that which I I've, I've done that a few times and anybody that collects 8-track tapes knows what I mean about dealing with 8-track tapes they are a pain in the butt to work with the repaired tapes can go back in the tape deck that they came in that one works And the other one should play too. And there's the other tape, so that one's working too. Two good tapes. That's how you can repair a couple of damaged cassette tapes. Ones that are glued together, you pretty much have to pry them apart and then just glue them back together. Be careful when you apply, if you apply any glue down around here, because if it gets on the tape, it's going to stick to the tape and then you're going you're gonna to break the tape again. So careful with the glue when you're applying it around where the tape is. And I just put a couple drops on and just wiped it down with my finger to spread it around so that it filled the crack completely. And I'd say this one here was pretty simple because it was a screwed together cassette, which they all should be. These ones here are garbage, but at least you can fix them. And if you've got something that's irreplaceable, that's pretty much what you have to do. Thanks for watching.